virtual memory. Again, the slides are, these pages are posted. Now, what we like to call virtual memory is all you can eat buffet. It's the same concept as buffet. If you have gone for a buffet, what, what does the restaurant uh, guarantee? It guarantees that we are going to serve all our customers unlimited food and the food will never run out. Think in, think in terms of memory. We are going to service all these applications and we will make sure that our memory never runs out, which is same as food never runs out, okay? Now, why can a restaurant make these claims and why does it work? Can anyone think? Why does, it, why, why does this concept of all you can eat buffet works? You pay a constant price, $11, $12, you take a plate and then whatever you want to eat, you can eat. Now imagine there are like hundreds and 200 of customers and still that process still works. How can restaurant, how, how, how does restaurant guarantee that? There has to be people, something. People don't eat that much. Exactly. The capacity, the real capacity of a person is not that much that the food would just there would be no longer any food, right? The fact that the real size that every application takes is just small MBs, right? But then every time you are executing an application, you give that application, that illusion that you have infinite memory at your disposal. And now what that does is it helps the programmers who are coding those applications to never bother about how my memory is get, getting mapped and how much memory is reserved for my application. So that removes that concern from the minds of the programmers when they are coding that application. That no matter how you code, we are going to guarantee you all that space, the infinite space required to run your application. And let's look into this, how this is achieved, right? Again, please read through these notes after the lecture. I'm just going to jump across some important terms which I felt necessary is necessary to point out, right? So basically the first paragraph talks about that you have these icons on your computer screens on your uh, desktop. Only when you double click an application, it starts executing. That means these applications might be residing in your hard drive or anywhere. And once you double click it, it is brought inside your RAM to be executed, right? Now, as we discussed in the previous lecture, a program and execution is called a process. So if you have a 64 bit architecture, then what we guarantee is every, what the computer guarantees is every process will have six, two raised to power 64 amount of memory reserved for it. Even though it does not have that, it guarantees it in a way that, that whatever you want to do, do it because you have this practically infinite memory, which is 16 exabytes. Every process has these components. It has a code, it has a data associated with that code and a heap and a stack portion of the memory, which can, the heap can grow here, stack can grow and fall. So every application will have its exclusive 16 exabytes of memory. Now, is this 16 exabytes of memory a real memory? No. What are the ma maximum memories you have? You have in TBs, 16 exabytes is two raised to power 64. It does not exist. Like like at least it might exist in supercomputers or somewhere, but I'm not sure exabyte, exascale computing, but like modern computers that we have, like we folks, we don't have that much memory in our computers, right? But then how do we guarantee it? And then in top of that, it's not just one process. You have 200 processes running and we are saying that every process has its own 16 EB. 
right isn't it amazing like as a programmer you are programming an application so that millions of people can use your application and then because of this technique that we have incorporated in our computers hardware the programmer does not have to worry if it if its program fits or not in the main memory we are guarant the computer is guaranteeing it by by giving an exclusive access to its own personal or a private 16 eb space right so so this is so this is what we have discussed so far and the the reason it is coming from uh, where it is coming from is the reality is something else the physical ram is in gbs the maximum is 16 gb in modern computers the like personal computers but then you are saying oh 16 eb space and i have like hundreds of applications in my computer then how does this mapping work right so this technique of virtual memory is how we are going to make this bridge of illu well, the virtual memory is a way in which we are going to create this illusion okay so the actual cpu view is like this for every program that you are running which is called a process it gets mapped to a cpu which is an act uh, so from the cpu side it is seeing this ram as this right so if you see from the computer side in reality the ma the the ram has multiple programs or processes running every program has its own structure with code data heap and stack reserved for it right but then from the programmer's point of view it is not bothered about the fact that oh my program 2 is going to run with program 1 which is created by some other vendor so let me create my program 2 in a way that it always fits my ram that is not the concern of a programmer why because from a programmer's point of view they have this infinite 16 eb space exclusive to them so now please code your application without worrying about space is what this illusion allows the programmers to do right but then there has to be some mapping because where 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 is this being executed of course it is being executed through ram but then how is it being mapped to the ram is what we are going to look into so this is in summary this is what it is the virtuality of this scenario lies in the flexibility that now the programmer does not need to be bothered by the physical limits of the real memory and can write their programs in the 64 bit address space which is the computer specification that's why when you download or install a package it tells you do you want to install a 32 bit package or a 64 bit package based on what computer you have even a 64 bit computer can run a 32 bit package right and that's where this analogy is drawn all you can eat buffet right that's where it's coming from right so one thing is pretty clear that the program and the data that that application needs it has to be brought into the physical memory to be executed upon by the cpu this is a ground truth from what we have learned that even if even if they can say there is a virtual memory or illusion the ground truth is it has to be brought into the ram for the cpu to access right and the other thing is that that the address space of each program is created with a full scope of virtual memory which is a six, which for a 64 bit machine is 16 exabytes which is 2 raised to power 64 right for a 32 bit machine it is 2 raised to power 32 which is 4 gb right So 
key questions for virtual memory that we're going to ask is how do we figure out a mapping utility that tells us who goes where in the physical memory? So when you're saying we can run multiple processes and every processes has its virtual memory, then there has to be a mapping utility that tells us which process goes where in the physical memory, right? And then when we talk about this transferring of data or the value or, or the memory, do we have to work in terms of bytes or can we carry multiple bytes at a time to save time, right? Because if you have introduced the concept of virtual memory, then obviously there has to be a time taken to load the value from the virtual memory into the physical memory. So that means how much data you can collect in one trip, right? So that's what you're talking about that. What is that unit of transfer of bytes that are transferred from VM to the physical memory? And the third question is, do we transfer the entire program? That means the entire program that we have, do we transfer it to the RAM? Or is it possible that we can transfer only a portion of this program onto the RAM to make space for other programs as well? Okay, so these are the key questions that naturally come up when we talk about virtual memory, right? Now look into this one, how, how this is working, right? So with this illusion that everybody has its infinite 16 EB space, now it is possible that program one can access this location in RAM, right? And then the program two code, look into this one. So program one code is accessing this location and program two code is also accessing that location. Whereas program two data is accessing that other location. Now this is a conflict here, the same location for program one. But for program two, the data can go to some place else this data can go to some place else. So you can imagine that, or you can understand from this that all the components for program one does not have to be serially organized in RAM. Since these are different partitions, based on how much size the heap data and code are, you can assign it in whatever fashion you want in this RAM to conserve as much space, right? Otherwise, there's an issue that you might run into some kind of bubbles in your RAM, memory bubbles. Imagine if you put the entire program one as it is here, and suppose program two does not fit into the remaining structure, right? Then you're not able, to, then you won't be able to load program two. But what if, you say that, okay, let me put code and code one below each other, data and data one below each other, right? So the fact that you can partition this and then fit it into the physical RAM in whatever order gives you that freedom that you can utilize your RAM to its maximum efficiency. Because if your program is running serially in the code, it's not that it's run, it has to run serially here. Because the illusion given to this code is, oh, you have your probably 50% of your code is mapped here and 50% of the code is probably mapped here. But because there is some mechanism which is mapping this to this one. So if you talk to this, so this is called as memory management unit, MMU, right? If you talk to this memory management unit, it's an actual physical device, which acts as an arbitrator. So it talks to the program to, oh, where do you want to store your top 50 lines of your code? I'm going to store it in suppose location zero, but you know what? I'm going to store the next 50% of your code in location 10. In terms of physical memory, these are two separate locations which are not continuous. But when the application is running, it is not bothered about where it is mapped in the RAM. It talks to the MMU, it tells us, hey, even though physically those are mapped way apart from each other, but because I know the exact addresses, the illusion I'm going to give it to you, the illusion I'm going to give it is you run the address in 10, you run the code in location 10, and immediately after that run the location, run the code in location 50. So from a programmer's perspective, it has a continuous memory. 
but in reality in physical ram it can be stored in any haphazard manner to conserve space and to make it more compact mapping to the ram wait can you explain how it say space cuz at at the end of the day don't you have to store everything for the programs for it to work if if the first 50% of the code is done it can be evicted from the ram so you have made another space oh, okay that makes sense right imagine ima- think of this uh, game i don't know if you have if you have seen some videos or this if i give you stones of different sizes you have a sand you have small chunks of stones and you have pebbles and you have rocks and if you have to fit it in a container what is the ma- what is the best way to fit this container if you have sand pebbles and rocks so suppose in one way you fill up the fill up fill first with the sand now what does what it does is probably the sand settles at the bottom and then whatever you put suppose that then, then you put uh pebbles then you put the pebbles and by the time you would realize that the vessel is already full so the better technique is put the heavier stones first which are larger and which are arbitrary in size then put the pebbles which are a little more little bit more defined and then pour in the sand because the sand will flow in through all the crevices and fill up all the gaps that's the best way to fill a vessel is the same logic here the fact that you can now partition your entire program to space and it can be stored in any haphazard manner on the ram allows other programs to be mapped to the ram as well because any time you have serviced one portion you can evict it from the ram and bring in some third programs elements into that ram and if there is a and if there is actually a space now you have to ask this question how do, how is it guaranteeing that infinite space well it is using the disk your disk is 1 terabyte so for applications that you are using even though your ram is just 16 gb but the memory management unit is also leveraging the disk so any time you want to store something you can you can store it into the disk and if you need it at some time you replace something in the memory throw it back to the disk and bring that new data from the disk or the new program from the disk and load it into the ram right so let me show you this diagram so that it becomes clear this page table is something which is uh create which is done by the memory management unit it's an actual physical device hardware device so see you have this virtual memory right and this virtual memory is there for every program now each of this can be mapped to the physical memory through a page table which implements this mapping and there is a possibility that this also talks to the disk and because the disk has terabytes of data uh, storage location it can leverage the space in disk to load the ram but from the programmer's point of view it does not know anything because that is the job of the memory management unit to move everything here and there so that you are guaranteed enough space think of it as a valet right if you want to you don't have to bother about the parking and the valet does everything what you are bothered about is every time i enter this hotel i should not be worried about if there is space in the parking or not i should be able to enter the hotel um it's obvious without any of these complications so that burden is taken by the valet or the memory management unit to find a way to park your car here and there somehow so that any time from a customer's point of view you are entering the hotel so you can leave your car at the door and when you are exiting the hotel your car is waiting for you at the door and the customer has no clue what has happened to its car in those one or two days and that's the job of that valet or the memory management unit if you store on the disk won't it take longer to access yeah that's that's why this concept of virtual me- at least it guarantees that the program is working 
that, okay, that is so a, it might run slow, but at least yeah, that slow. is a trade off. Yeah. Right. So I think uh, let me just show you some pictures, and then we can discuss it more in the next class. Right. So, so the big thing is how this virtual memory is organized. Right. So I'm going to uh, discuss those concept now. Remember, we were talking about, do we want to transfer one byte of data from the VM to the physical memory, or we can talk in terms of chunks? Well, we, are, we will talk in terms of chunks, which is this. How, uh, vol, uh, this transfer, right? So instead of getting a byte from the larger memory, we get a big chunk largely on the basis of spatial locality, right? So therefore, the unit of transfer is chosen to be a big chunk, and this is called as a page, All right? So, so this is called as a page in virtual memory, and it is typically 4 KB in size. So rather than accessing one byte at a time, your virtual memory space is divided into multiple pages, where a page can be few kilobytes, megabytes, something like that. Traditionally, it is around four megabyte, four KB in size, typically. So you can see here, your virtual memory space. So the, these pages that you are seeing here is a collection of four K bytes. So if you have to move anything, you are moving pages, which is a chunk of memory at a time, right? Now, when this chunk of memory, which is called as a page, is taken from a virtual memory and put it onto the physical memory, the name changes to frame. So what is called as page in virtual memory is now called as frame or a page frame in your physical memory. So just be careful on these two terms. The sizes are obviously same. It's, it's the difference is where it is being stored. If it is being stored on the virtual memory, it is called as a page. If it comes to the physical memory, the name changes to frame. So it's the same 4K data, 4KB. So the mapping utility and the mapping utility of virtual to physical is done by a memory management unit through, through some data structure called as page table, which is basically a lookup table. Page table is basically a lookup table. S give me the virtual address. I'm going to tell you where it is being mapped in the physical memory. That is what the page table is all about. Because there has to be a mapping, right? What is the word? So if you talk about this one, right? So you can see how these are mapped. So these circles are basically your page tables, right? And there's a page table dedicated for each process. So for every process, which is P1, you have its own virtual memory. You have its own page table, which does that translation. For process two, you have its own virtual memory, own page table. And now see how these pages can be randomly arranged. That is the job of those page tables to locate where it is stored in the physical memory, right? And if it is not stored in the physical memory, you get a page fault. And then it has to run through the disk, get that value back into the RAM, and then update the addressing mapping here. So if you've heard of this concept of page faults, that is what it is. If it is not already mapped onto the physical memory, it's not going to find the location. So it has to run all the way to the disk, get that data, put it into the physical memory, and then map it back through a new entry in the page table. Okay, so, so three important terms we have introduced is a page, a frame, and a page table, right? So, so let's wrap up this lecture with this question, uh, which helps us to identify what these are. Now, the question is, if virtual memory is 512 gigabytes with page size of 4 MB, right? That means each page is of 4 MB. Then what is the number of page in the page table? Right? If your virtual memory, which is 512 GB, and we know that the virtual memory is partitioned into pages. Now, if each page size is 4 MB, then how many pages do we have in the page table? 
do not use calculator it's much quicker if you put everything in powers of 2 so 512g is 512 is 2 raised to power 9 g is 2 raised to power 30 so we have 2 raised to power 39 bytes in virtual memory and the unit we call as page is 4 mb 4 is 2 raised to power 2 m is 2 raised to power 20 so we have 2 raised to power 22 if we divide the two which means 5 to 12 gigs divided by 4 mega you have the number of pages so 2 raised to power 39 divided by 2 raised to power 22 2 raised to power 17 which is 128k so you have 128k pages let me know if you get that answer so you have 128k pages that means when you see this page 012 it's running all the way till page 128k minus one whatever it is now if the physical memory is 8 gb how many pages can it hold at capacity now if you have a physical memory obviously physical memory is limited it's 8 gb not 512 gb then how many pages can it hold so it's 8 gb divided by 4 mb so 8 gb is 2 raised to power 33 and 4 mega bytes is 2 raised to power 22 2 raised to power 11 which is 2k So virtual memory, does it always live on the disk? So virtual memory is somehow mapped. So all your programs are on the disk, right? So when we say virtual memory, yes. But then they have to be mapped to your physical RAM, right? So it's only through the disk that it gives an illusion of infinite memory or infinite RAM. If, it, if there was no disk, there was no way to give this illusion. So, so the things which are in play here to give that illusion are disk, right? And this memory management unit, which has this page table. And those are actually two physical elements, memory elements. Okay. All right, so let's uh, end the lecture here. Please feel free to uh, please read both lecture 13 and 14. Uh, th this is all intuitive. There are some questions here. Please try try those out. We are going to uh, finish this in Tuesday's lecture. But it will be it will be better for you if you actually invest time to pre-read it before the lecture and come up with queries. Okay. Any questions? Right. So, welcome everybody. Uh, this week is our second last week of class lectures, which is week thirteen. Uh, before we resume uh, our discuss discussion last Thursday on virtual memory, where we uh, equated it to like all you can eat buffet scheme, where the programmer while creating any application doesn't have to worry about how much space will it uh, will you, will their application be allocated on the actual memory. So what the computer does is it creates a notion of a virtual memory where every running program or a process is guaranteed its own private uh, 64 GB memory space, right? So since there are like 64, not 64 GB, 64 bits of address, right? So two raised to power 64, right? So two raised to power 64 is 16 EB. Right, so that is 16 times two gigs. So, so every process will have these components and it is assumed that every process will have its own private space, which is practically infinite. Okay, now the trick to do that was to 
create a mapping scheme, okay, since every process has this, but we know that there will be some hardware memory where this is basically running from. So that memory happens to be your main memory, and these applications are somehow sitting on the hard disk, right, which is like larger memory than your uh, actual memories or the main memory, which is RAM. So what we say here is, okay, from a CPU perspective, if you have two programs running in parallel or simultaneously, so ideally from the CPU's point of view, for point of view, both these programs need to be there on the CPU, right? But from a programmer's view, like from the view of the person who created these applications, they did not assume that some other program would be sitting on the CPU or, or sorry, on the memory. So for them, it was like you have this practically infinite memory space. So create our application. And then there would be some mapping scheme created by the memory management unit, okay, MMU. It's uh, famously called as MMU. It's a hardware device again. And that acts as your mapping scheme. It maps your virtual memory to your actual physical memory. Now, the analogy we uh, discussed last time was like a parking valet, right? So as a customer, you are always guaranteed a spot in the parking lot so that you can always visit that restaurant or hotel, right? So now what hotel does is, okay, because of the valet, it takes that concern away from the customer that, and, and guarantees them that you will always have a parking spot. So, why, so just visit our business, right? And then as soon as the customer reaches, their car is taken care of. As soon as they step out, their car is waiting for them. So this valet works as your management unit, parking management unit, or in, in the computers, we are calling it as memory management unit, right? But in reality, the onus or the responsibility lies on this memory management unit to make space for the application onto the physical RAM, right? And if there is no space on the physical RAM, then partition their program memory in a way that the things that you need the most are sitting on the memory. And probably some old, if there's an older application which is running, you probably want to remove some part of that and put it back onto the disk. So that management is oblivious towards to each other programs, right? Program one is not sure if program two is sitting there or program two is not sure if program one is sitting there just like customers, like you don't know if there's another customer whose car is waiting at the parking lot, right? So if you can understand the parking valet uh, structure, then this is exactly what is happening. Virtually infinite parking lot. Now, what we discussed last time was that there's this mapping we are talking about where your virtual memory gets mapped to your main memory, right? So, so the, this transfer of memory units from virtual to physical, should we be doing it byte by byte or should we be dealing it with multiple bytes at one time, right? To save, to save us the time to map in every iteration or in every instance. So what we, have, what we learned about it was the virtual memory space is in fact divided into pages, all right? So if we look here, so yeah, so virtual memory is now divided or partitioned into pages where each page is some few kilobytes or megabytes, right? So typically here it's denoted as a four kilobyte memory, right? So we have, for example, in this case, we have four pages in that snapshot and every page is basically four KB. So if you have to load anything or map this virtual memory to the physical memory, it's rather than mapping byte by byte, you're basically mapping page by page, right? So that means you have to also think of main memory as collection of pages so that there's one-to-one -one mapping. Now, there's, there, here is where there's a, uh, there's a new terminology I want to introduce that what we call as a page in virtual memory is called as a frame in main memory. So just be careful on these terminologies. If you're working on virtual memory, then every chunk is called a page. 
and its corresponding mapping onto the main memory is called as a frame or called as a page frame, right? So if you see here virtual memory and physical memory, so basically every process will have its own virtual memory, which is 16 exabytes, which is two raised to power 64. The virtual memory is divided into equally sized pages and your physical memory obviously is in this case is smaller capacity than your virtual memory okay and then then there's a one-to-one -one mapping where if you're allocating 4 kb space for a page then 4 kb chunks of physical or main memory is called a page frame right so remember that page zero in this example is mapped to frame zero but page one is not necessarily mapped to frame one, okay? Page one can be mapped to some frame, say frame two. Now who keeps track of all this mapping? This is their circle, which is called as memory management unit. Now, what is the data structure that the memory management unit is using? That is called as a page table, right? So memory management unit has this lookup table called as, uh, or called as a page table where the pages from virtual memory are mapped to frames on physical memory. Okay, so that's where the page table comes in. So that circle here is basically a page table which implements this virtual to physical memory mapping, right? And it can happen that the virtual memory, some page are basically mapped to the disk. And because disk has a larger memory than your main memory, so basically your hard drives, right? You have a 500 GB hard drive or a one terabyte hard drive in your computers, for example, they are larger memories than your eight or 16 GB RAM, which you have in your personal computers. So that illusion of infinite memory is coming from the fact that your virtual memory can map some part of your memory space into this physical, into this uh, hard drive or disk, right? But for the program, it does not know it's on the disk. It's the job of this virtual memory mapping that it is saving it into, into the disk, right? So it's basically the disk helps us to extend the space of this physical memory. So from 16 GB, somehow you get like one terabyte of actual memory space, right? So it may include hard disk, depending on the application to application, right? Another benefit of page table is, if you have multiple processes running, then you can see that it's not that everything is mapped sequentially on the physical memory. It's not that this, uh, so the job of this memory management unit is not to assign sequential mapping from one, pro one process to the physical memory before mapping process two. It can map it in any order to maximize the utilization of memory. So the analogy we discussed last time was this example of, of you have a container, right? And you have like sand, pebbles and rocks. So how would you pack it for maximum efficiency? Well, we would put the larger rocks first, then whatever gaps are created are covered by smaller pebbles, and then we will pour in the sand. So that there's, a, there's a question in chat. Yeah, I'll get to that. Thank you for letting me know. So once we pack all that sand, you get the maximum efficiency, right? So that's how the memory management unit will take care of mapping multiple processes so that there is no gap in the memory left. Okay chat questions. So if your disk is filled with data, that means you're out of out of memory in your disk, right? In that case, your disk, your your disk is filled up. That's why you have to clean up some memory. As long as you have space left on the disk, right? Any application which cannot be fit which cannot fit into the physical memory can be used via disk. 
Yeah, yeah. Disk is your hard drive, right? Disk is basically hard drive. This is actually a hard drive, hard disk. Okay. So is this clear? So, so our job in this uh, chapter is now to understand how this memory mapping scheme works. Like given a virtual memory and a virtual memory address, like how would we know that it's getting mapped to what part of your physical memory? So that is the process we are going to understand with some examples, right? So this is the first example uh, that we discussed last time. And probably you guys would be able to uh, solve it uh, right now. So if, if virtual memory is 512 GB gigabytes with page size of 4 MB. So every time you read a question, just take a pause even before reading the entire question. So when I read this question, I get two things in mind. Okay, the virtual memory is given to me, which is 512 GB and page size of 4 MB. So even looking at the remaining part of the question, I somehow kind of guess that they might be talking about number of pages first, right? And that is indeed the question, right? Because if somebody is asking you, oh, you have this much total space of 512 gigabytes and your page size is 4 MB, that means we know that virtual memory is divided into equally, equally uh, equal size pages. Then if size of one page is 4 MB, then how many pages do we have? Can you guys calculate how much that is in bytes? No, it won't be in bytes, sorry. It's the number, it's the quantity, right? So how much, how, how many pages are there in this virtual memory? Um, 512 gigabytes. Or wait, were we, you're asking about how many pages? Yeah, that's the question. What is the number oh. of pages <laughs> in the page table? Oh, it's 128K. <laughs> okay, 128K. Everybody got that? Let me know, unmute and let me know if you do not get that, right? And it's faster with two raised to power, two raised to, uh, like if you express it in powers of two rather than using a calculator, right? So it's two raised to power 39 divided by two raised to power 22, which is two raised to power 17. You borrow two raised to power seven, that is 128, two raised to power 10 is K. So 128 K pages in the page table. Right. So if you have a page table in the memory management unit, so there is this page. So there would be a page table. Okay. So there would be a page table here. So it's mapping every space in your virtual memory. Right. So in that case, your number of page in the page table would be 128K. Next question. If the physical memory is 8GB, right? In the same question, if your physical memory is 8 GB, then how many pages can it hold at capacity? Or in other words, how many page frames it can hold? So this time it would be 8 gigabytes divided by 4 MB, which is 2 raised to power 30 plus 3, 2 raised to power 33 divided by two raised to power 22, which is two raised to power 11, which is 2K. So at max, your physical memory can hold 2K page frames, right? And part C is yes, it is possible that virtual memory is smaller than physical memory, but it's usefulness is not that great because your whole idea of using virtual memory is kind of, you know, there's a limited resource in terms of physical memory, but we want to expand that with this illusion of virtual memory. Okay. Some more examples, right? Now, one thing to note here is everything here is byte addressable. That's why we are not bothered about the B because every every record here in this 4K space, in this 4K space, every record here is one byte. So it's byte addressable. Any location you get, you get one byte at a time. So in that case, we have four kilobytes in each 
page. So in similar lines, this there is this question, okay. If the page size is one KB, right? If page size is one KB, then we need 10 bits, right? One KB is one K, one K is two raised to power 10, which is log, if you take a log two, it would be 10 bits to uniquely identify any given byte within a page. Understood? Because a page is a collection of bytes. How many bytes? Well, in this example, it is one KB, the page size. So how many address bits do you need to locate any byte? 10 bits. So 10 bits will uniquely identify one byte within any page, right? So if virtual memory is 512 gigabytes from this example, so we will need a total of, now how much is 512 gigs? Two raised to power 39, right? So we will need 39 bits to identify any byte. So if you have a virtual memory, which is 512 gigabytes, to locate any one byte out of 512 gigabytes, you will need 39 bits of address. Right? Now, since memory is organized in pages of one KB each in this example, right? If your memory, virtual memory is organized in pages of one KB each, then, then so, you, so you have one KB each, uh, th that is every page is one KB. So 10 bits are offset within a page and 29 bits correspond to a page number. Right, because look carefully. Now think of it as an indirection where to locate a byte, you need to first identify the page number or the page address. And once you have identified the page, within that page, you have to identify your byte, right? So, so out of 39 bits, which are given to you as an address, you need to have 10 bits reserved to identify a specific byte. And the higher 29 bits help you to identify the given page. So if I have to annotate. Suppose this is your virtual memory, which is 512 GB. It is divided or grouped into multiple pages. How many pages are there? Well, each page is one KB. So if you locate one record here, this is one byte, right? And this entire size is one KB in this example, right? One KB. So in this entire memory space of 512, uh, 512 GB, you had 39 bits, zero till 38. So to locate any given byte, you have to find the page number first. So, so, every, so you have to find which page that byte is located first of all, right? So how do we do that? Well, we partition it somehow that was zero to nine helps us to locate any given byte within a page because it's one KB. So that means the remaining 29 bits, which is 10 till 38 would be used to locate the page number. And can we guess how many pages are there? If you do two raised to power 28, can you find out how many pages are there? What is two raised to power 28? Two fifty six mega M, right? So if we do two fifty six two fifty six M multiplied by one KB, do we get five twelve GB? Two fifty six mega multiplied by one KB. 
right? You should get two raised to the power 28 multiplied by two raised to the power 11, which is two raised to the power 39. Is this example clear? To address any given byte, find the page number and then locate that many bits. So in this case, we first found out how many bits are needed to locate one byte within a page. That is 10. That means if we subtract 10 from 39, those many bits, which are 29, are needed. Not, uh, wait, not 28, it's 29, right? Then 29 bits are needed for page numbers. Okay, so let me formally There we go. So if we come to this example, that's what is happening here. Every page has one KB. So 10 bits is the page offset, right? And then the remaining 29 are your page number. So how the mapping works is you take those higher 29 bits and find out what the page number page number is, right? Let's call it P. So with that, when you go to that location, so this is like multiple pages in your page table. So this there are that means there are two raised to power twenty nine pages on this page table, right? So once you grab that page number, go to that page number, and find out what frame number is stored in this page. This frame number is basically corresponding to the address, the, the, the page frame address in your physical memory. Because we talked about this mapping, right? Now this mapping is like, take these higher 29 bits, find the page number. At that location, what is the frame number being stored? That frame number would point it towards a given frame, let's say K, it will point to the frame number K on the physical memory. So what do we do? We go to that page frame on the physical memory. And then within that page frame, we go to this page offset. Because this 10 bits of page offset is basically locating one byte within any given page frame. So once you have identified which page frame you have to look into, you go to this page offset, let's call it as N, and then you take that nth byte in that frame. So that is where your virtual memory address is mapped to. Okay, nth byte within the frame K. Does that make sense? So this is your virtual address. So virtual address will have two components. It will have some bits which guides it towards a page P on the page table. And the remaining bits would be the page offset. That means once you have gone to that physical memory, which byte is this address pointing to? So first we use the page number to identify the frame. Here, there would be some value where it would point towards the actual physical memory, right? And then once you narrow it down to that page frame, visit that page offset N, right? We'll take some examples. So, so let's try to solve examples here before we start taking examples on this mapping, right? So take some time to solve this and we can discuss it after a few minutes, okay? Now suppose there are 200 processes and each process, a process occupies eight MB memory, right? Then what is the minimum size of physical memory needed to run all these processes simultaneously? Right, that means loading all 200 processes. Then if it's a 64-bit machine, 
how much virtual memory is allocated to each of these processes. Okay, in the meantime, I will look into your questions, if any, on the chat. You can write down your answers as 1A and 1B in the chat. So, okay, so 200 processes and each process occupies 8 MB memory, right? So when it says it occupies 8 MB memory, that is the actual footprint of your application that the developer has created. But what does the computer say? We will give you much more than 8 MB as an illusion, right? But the first part of the question is straightforward. It's basically telling us that in case you want to fit all these 200 processes on the physical memory, then the minimum size of your physical memory would be 200 times 8 MB, right? So that is 1600 MB. Does that make sense? Any question there? Okay, it's, it's 1600 MB. Second part, 1B. In a 64-bit machine, how much virtual memory is, is allocated to each of these processes? What's the answer? No, not infinite. 2 raised to power 64, that's right. That looks like practically infinite, but it's not the infinite, right? It gives an illusion of practically infinite. That means it would be taken care of. The program will always load. So in a 64-bit machine, that means 1B has nothing to do with the opening statement, 200 processes and blah, blah, blah. It has to do with the fact that it's a 64-bit machine. So it's a 64-bit machine, that means every address is 64 bits. So you have practically two raised to power 64 as your virtual memory, which is guaranteed for each process. So this question is checking the fact that if you know what is the virtual memory allocated to each process. And what we learned is every program, once it's executed and it becomes a process, it is guaranteed its own virtual memory, which is the entire virtual memory, two raised to power 64. Yeah, Joshua, 32 bit machine, two raised to power 32. Okay. Question two, physical memory is two gigabytes, virtual memory is four gigabytes and page size is four kilobytes. That means each page size is four kilobytes. Two A, how many page frames are there in the physical memory? B, how many entries or number of pages are there in each page table, right? Let's solve 2A and 2B first. So what is 2A? So 2A, the key thing that you have to notice is page frames. It's not talking about pages. It is talking about page frames. That means you have to understand that the notion of frames comes from the fact that the main memory is partitioned into frames. So, so when, you, when you see the physical memory, you have two GB space. So two GB divided by four KB, right? Which is two raised to power 31 divided by two raised to power 12 which is two raised to power 19, two raised to power 19, two raised to power nine is 512. So 512K, uh, are you getting 512K? I'm just doing it on my head. So 
let me know if you're getting the same answer. Just do not agree with what I'm saying. I'm also solving it on the fly. And also understand the quickness, what quickness is needed to solve these questions. Okay. Can anyone comment on the chat? Two raised to power 19, which is 512K. Okay. How many pages are there in each page table? So how many pages or how many entries on the page table? So these are like synonym, synonymous number of pages or entries on the page table. Because what gets mapped via page table? Virtual memory. So now the numerator is 4 GB. So it would be 4 GB divided by 4 KB. 4, 4 cancels G by K, right? Which is 2 raised to power 20. All right? Basically, it's 1 M. 2 raised to power 20 is 1 M. Can anyone uh, clarify this fact? Why is there why is there a notion of each page table? Did it bother you while reading it, right? Somehow, why each page table? What does it signify? There was it was the same in the previous question somehow, like in the one of the sole examples. Why each page table? There are multiple page tables, and why why will there be multiple page tables? Yes, AJ. Because, uh, can you be louder? No. Physical, there's only one physical memory. So what is the multiple part? Your physical memory is only one. So what is the multiple part? Your page tables are multiple. Okay, Samir, I know uh, we get that multiple page tables, right? So why multiple page tables? Exactly, thanks Arturo. Each process gets its own virtual memory. The moment you have one private virtual memory for each process, there would be one dedicated page table which maps that virtual memory to the physical memory. All right. And as a data structure, you can have multiple page tables in the memory management unit for multiple, if there are multiple processes running, right? So look into this example, right? We had two pages running and we had a memory management unit which had page table number one and page table number two. That's why each page table, right? Now, since virtual memory is guaranteed to be four gigabytes for each process, so each page table is going to have the same number of pages. Right, great. Yep, Samir, yep, 64-bit system, two raised to 64 VM, that's right. That's 1B, that's basically 1B, the question we discussed. So for 200 processes, we have 200 virtual memories where each virtual memory is two raised to 64. That's how we are guaranteeing that you have 16 exabytes, which is two raised to 64 memory to each of these 200 processes in question one. So if you had like a, a theoretically a 128 system, that would be like a lot of memory to store. Yeah, that's why it would take like years to even fully exhaust two raised to power 64. That's why from 32 bits, we straight away jump to 64 bit architectures rather than 33, 34, 35. Otherwise who will go through that pain of every two, three years to revamp everything from inside so that you can accept more number of uh, processes, right? Which, so they directly went from 32 to 64 because the jump is in exp jump is exponential. Which gives us uh, the illusion of uh, infinite memory. Cause it's- Yeah, like even 32 bits never... would give that illusion. Yeah, even 32 bits would give that illusion. But then if you have to run multiple processes at the time, 
and as more and more applications are getting created and you want to have multi processing environment in your computers then they took a decision that okay let's create a 64 bit arch architecture rather than going 33 34 35 36 right so from 32 bit directly 64 bit and it will take and you can see it's a 16 exabytes these modern laptops that we have don't even have hard drives of 16 exabytes right so we are still in the tb region so we have a long way to go even before exhausting that 64 bit but it's a safeguard that the computer architectures have taken um just 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 um what what exactly what like part of question two are we on i've been writing stuff down i'm kind of going a little fast for me are we on a b or c we are on 2c now okay it's called 2c we've discussed 2a and 2b suppose each entry in page table is four bytes right that is it stores 32 bits of frame so yeah this question is kind of tricky so what this question is basically saying that you have the page table right now suppose each entry in page table is four bytes okay then what is the page table size just be careful here okay so what we are saying here is you have a virtual memory which is four gigabytes and it is divided into number of page uh, number of pages right and each page size is 4 kb but then you have a page table which is a data structure which is a lookup table basically which is mapping one to one now what they are saying is suppose your page table the data structure that you are having it only stores four bytes in every row and that four bytes denotes the frame address remember this question now your page table the page table size is not exactly the same as virtual memory size remember that because page table is in a actual unit it's an actual hardware unit memory management unit so this data structure that gets created page table it's not that your page table will also be 2 raised to power 64 okay your page table will have a limited memory because it's in the actual because it's in the actual actual uh, actual it's an actual device which is a memory management unit now every entry in your page table is storing the forwarding address of where to look at in the physical memory now let that forwarding address be four bytes long which is 32 bits that's what it's saying suppose that four bytes is storing only 32 bits of frame address only that means this frame number here is basically 32 bits right now so what is the size of this page table that's the question so first of all if you have to create a page table for this virtual memory how many pages do you need that is one that is 2b what was the answer in 2b the number of pages that was 2 raised to power 20 right which was 1m and every record in page table is storing 4 byte so 1m into 4b which is 4mb right so your page table size here is four megabytes, which is way less than what your virtual memory is, four gigabytes, right? And that is still doable. Four megabytes is doable as a data structure. Did everyone follow that? So here we are talking about the page table size. That is the key element that you have to focus on right yep it's 2 raised to power 22 4 bytes into 2 raised to power 20 from this example 
because number of pages in the page table from 2B is one mega. And each entry is four bytes. Suppose each entry is four bytes in your page table. Right, so it's four megabytes. Okay, great. So that brings us to this mapping question now, which is which I've highlighted. So let's look into this question, right? Suppose we have a process with only eight page table entries as shown in the picture below. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this. Suppose we have a process with only eight page table entries as shown in the picture below. So what we see here is a page table. So there are eight pages in the page table, which are numbered zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So these are your addresses in the page table. Let's say virtual address space is two KB and physical address space capacity is one KB, right? So virtual address space is two KB and your physical address space capacity is one KB. What are the translated physical address from the following virtual addresses? That means if you have a virtual address given by this hexadecimal, which is 0x75, what does it translate to on physical memory? And if you have a virtual address 0x1c4, what does it translate to on your actual physical memory? And the mapping is somehow like this. If you look into this page table, which is given to you, now this is given as a part of your question, right? It's not created from the question. It is a part of your question. In this diagram, we have been given a page table, which only has eight entries. And we see that there are some forwarding address of frames, which are stored in some page table entries. That means page number one on page table is storing zero X two. That means it is storing the actual frame number where the data or the address is mapped to on the physical memory. So this two is frame number two. Zero X three is mapped to frame number three, right? So if you see here, your physical memory has four partitions, right? So let's try to answer this question of how we can translate from VA virtual address to PA, which is physical address. So first of all, to answer such a question, let's be clear on how many bits will be needed to represent virtual and physical addresses. So for two KB virtual address space, we need log two raised to power 11 to base two. Right, because if you have two KB, that means it's two raised to power 11. So you need 11 bits of virtual address. And for physical memory, you would need 10 bits, right? So if you see this example here, so this sequence is now 11 bits. And from these 11 bits, you have to identify how many bits are needed to access the page table. So if you look here, from those 11 bits of virtual address, how many bits are needed to go to the page table? Three, because your page table only has eight entries. The page table has eight entries, which means the page size is basically two KB divided by eight, right? Two KB is coming from the virtual memory. So your page table has eight entries, so you have 256 bytes. That means each page size is 256 bytes, right? And a frame in physical memory is same as page in the virtual memory. That means your frame size on physical memory is also 256 bytes. If your frame size is also 256 bytes, right? 
then how many how many frames can you store in this physical space 1 kb divided by 256 bytes which is 4 uh, hence we see 4 page frames right so 8 pages there are 8 pages in the page table but the capacity in the physical memory is only 4 and that is true also for only one process which gets stored on the page table right so we have decoded at least this much that we have identified the size of the page which is same as the size of the frame so once we got to know it's 256 bytes we can find out how many frames are there on the physical memory there are four frames so now look into this one your physical address of 10 bits now will have 8 bits offset and 2 bits for block frame number right so let's try to understand what they are trying to say right so you have physical address of 10 bits right your physical address is 10 bits because your physical address space is 1 kb which is 10 bits now out of these 10 bits you only need 2 bits to identify a frame number right that means 10 bits will be needed to find a unique byte one row so let me annotate to find one byte in this frame you would need 10 bits sorry you will need 8 bits for one entry in this frame does that make sense and the two bits are needed for finding out which frame number to go to that is the story of physical address now any question so far from here right so let's write down the virtual address now 0x75 hexadecimal system how do we write it into binary every number in hexadecimal is arranged as a four bit binary 5 is written as 0101 right 5 is written as 0101 d is what a b c d 10 11 12 13 d is 13 1101 1, 7 is 01111 right so these are your 12 bits to denote your virtual address right if you if you just translate 75 in binary sequence right but what is the actual number of virtual address what is the number of bits in virtual address it's 11 right so which 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 right so this extra zero is coming from your like our earlier discussions on hexadecimal to binary conversion but we understand that the virtual address is 11 bits right it's 11 bits 2 kb space 11 bits so from this 11 bits we knew that our page table had eight entries given in the question so to find a pay, to find a page how many minimum bits do we need to find one page one one entry here three bits because 0 to 7 right so that means from this general schema you need the higher three bits to find the page number so if we go and look into our address scheme we need the higher three bits because this zero is discarded this zero is discarded because you only have 11 bits of virtual address space 
out of this 11 you only look into the higher three because you have eight entries in your page table so this is denoting to the entry number seven so this is denoting entry number seven that means go to entry number seven on page table and you will find the forwarding address of the frame and then the remaining is your byte offset so one one zero one zero one zero one is your byte offset and your entry number seven is actually storing the frame number in the physical memory so we can now go back and see what is stored in entry seven and the question entry seven is zero x2 which is pointing to frame number zero zero one zero right zero x2 that means you have to go to physical address zero x2 here the second frame so what we do is simply So what we do is simply replace your page entry to your frame number, which is So this is seven, seven was pointing to frame number. Okay, this annotation is kind of weird here. Okay, mouse. Zero X two, right? It's pointing to zero X two. Oh, seven, oh, it's my bad. Seven is zero X three. Oh, that's what I'm kind of getting confused. Okay, seven, seven is zero X three, my bad. So seven is zero X three. So hence we will see a three here. Okay, uh, let's remove all annotations. Now, let's go back to this question. Okay, yeah, this is better. Okay, L look here. Right. So you go to the seven entry, you find the location that which is mapped to is two. Right. So three, sorry, seven is mapped to three. So we write zero one one. Right. So your physical address is 10 bits. So you're taking eight bits from here. And then you are and you know the forwarding address is three. So you will need only two. You will need on only two bits, right? Because you need to make a 10 bit sequence for physical address. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So your physical address in binary is one, one, followed by the same lower eight bits. Now, if you have to convert it to hexadecimal, you have to append two more zeros in the beginning so that the sequence is three D five. So the D five still remains the lower eight sequence. The three bits, the three bit header, which is the frame, which is the page entry, is now converted to two bit, which is one. Oh, yeah. one. I, I just, just so I'm clear. Um, so to convert, you basically took off the front one because that was three bits and not two bits. Right. But I have to first find out why three bits. Why did I have to take the first three bits? because we have eight entries here, which can be mapped using three bits. So we take the header from the, uh, from the top mode, from the higher bits, we take away the three bits. We find it that that number is seven. We enter seven, we see zero X three. That means any value in this page table would be storing the physical frame number from zero, one, two, three. So this is storing three. So I substitute it with three. So it becomes 3D5. Question. How does it represent bits stored on the? So every program gets assigned a virtual address with this page table, right? Where the actual byte location is indeed D5. 
the actual byte you have to go to is D5. The higher bits is basically what position you have to go to. So D5 is basically the location of the target byte. But before that, you need to have some bits which denote, is it in the virtual memory? If it is in the virtual memory, then what is that corresponding address in physical memory? So that translation that I was talking about is the same translation here. Yeah, so physical memory is basically the actual RAM. It's the basic actual RAM, right? And and as as it was shown in this example here, if if it has to be mapped here, right? So it will be given an address based on that disk, right? So it, right now, whatever addresses you're seeing are the actual physical memory addresses. Okay, does that make sense? So similarly, Let's see this other example, which was B part. 0x1c4. Okay, so now try to arrange 1c4 as a binary sequence. So C is what? A, B, C, 10, 12. C is 12. So you will see 1, 1, 0, 0, right? And 1 is triple zero one. Now take away the lower eight bits because those are your byte offset and look only at the higher three bits. So I will only look at the higher three bits from the 11. Okay, so I'm only going to look at these 11 bits of virtual address and I will only look at the higher three bits, which gives me the page table entry, which is one. So I go back to my question, what is stored in entry one? It has a forwarding address 0x2. That means go to physical memory frame number two, right? So I will replace, simply replace 001 with 10. And that will give me 10 bits of physical address. Right. It will give me 10 bits of physical address. Let me annotate four, eight, 10. And the question talks about that. You have 10 bits of physical address and 11 bits of virtual address. So this is the 10 bits. And if to decode it into hexadecimal, you append two more zeros and you decode it, decode it as two C4. So in essence, you see that the C4 remains the same, D5 remains the same. One and seven gets mapped to two and three, which basically says that entry number one in page table corresponds to frame number two on the physical memory. Entry number seven on the page table is mapped to frame number three on the physical memory. So three D five two C four. Okay. Any questions or clarification? This is important, right? So let me know if you understood this example. So okay, just just so we're clear. Mm -hmm. You go to the, you go to the table, you find like the number. So it's for example, seven or one, you find the match, like the address it says it's going to, mm -hmm. and then that's how you figure the next, the next page out. That's you convert that into hexadecimal. So zero X three is the frame number right. and then the lower eight bits denote one byte in this page, in this frame, because this frame is also a collection of bytes. Right. So that lower eight bits, which is D5, is basically one row in this one chunk. But then the first three is replaced were... by it. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's Look all. Into... Yeah. So in this case, this P is basically seven, and this K is basically three. K is three. Similarly, for the next part, P was one and your frame number was two. 
right? And this n always remained the same, which was d5 for both and c4 for the next question, right? That means the virtual address encapsulates the page offset and then this page number. So first visit the page number, see what is it referencing to. The address which is sitting in that page number on the page table is basically my forwarding address on the physical memory, which is your frame, which is basically called as frame number. And you just append that frame number in front of this page offset. That becomes your, that narrows it down to that one particular byte in this physical memory. So we can say that the virtual address 0x75 maps to physical address 0x3d5. And the virtual address 0x1c4 maps to 0x2c4 on physical memory. That's how the translation happened, right? So what you can do here is now you can try this example and you can probably discuss it on the discuss lectures thread. Okay. So here the virtual address is 0xfc51908f. That means every letter here has to be written in four bits for hexadecimal to binary conversion. Right. And that would make sense. Why? Because look into virtual memory, it's four gigabytes. So how many address bits do you need here? Two raised to power 32, right? So you need 32 address bits. So from 32 address bits, you have to find out what is the page offset and what is the number of bits needed for virtual page number. And the second, and the question is saying that find the corresponding physical address that this virtual address is mapped to in the main memory and let the value or the frame number stored in the page table for the above virtual page entry be 0x00152. So this is basically the forwarding address, right? So this value, this is the value which is stored on the page table for the virtual page number corresponding to this address, right? So you have to find out what is the corresponding physical address, okay? So we still have two minutes. If you can try it out right now, that's great for me as well and for you. But yeah, that ends our discussion on virtual memory. Some uh, key, yeah, you can, I can just go over this quickly. Now, the key here is that your page table, as we talk, talk about that page table can be of limited size, right? Then there is this concept of that even if a page table is a smaller byte, then how can we store a page table being four petabyte, for example? Like if you if you have a page table which is of limited size, how can you map a higher page table? Well, the idea here is that we apply a trick where we create a multi-level page table. Like it's basically indirection rather than going directly into page table. If you imagine this page table also has two levels. That means level one page table will point to the level two page table. And then the level two page table will correspond to the physical memory, right? So that means you can have higher, you can store higher capacities of virtual pages through your page tables, right? So it basically means, it basically means if you have a multi-level garage, Right. So rather than having one garage, rather than having one floor in a garage where you can map all the cars, think of having multi multi level garages or multi level page tables. So first it points to the first page table. Now, instead of mapping it directly to the physical memory, it's saying, oh, go to page table two, entry number this. So talk to the talk to the second valet. Right. So it, he go, so, so, the, so, so the address takes it to the second valet and then it decides where in the map memory it's mapped to. So creating this two level mapping helps you to map larger uh, or larger number of processes on the on this uh, uh, physical memory. So you can read this uh, discussion, it's self-explanatory, but the idea is you can have multi-level page tables created as a data structure as well, right? 
And then there is this beautiful concept that I think I had talked about earlier. What is a page fault? Well, page fault simply means here, your page entry is telling you to go to page, ent uh, page entry number one, right? And then it is mapped to zero X2, right? Now suppose your page entry takes you to four, right? And if this four is not mapped to the physical memory, then it's a page fault. That means it will now run to the disk, grab that location, grab that data, map it to the physical memory by evicting one of the records and then adjust the page table so that now four points to some location, open location. You get the fact? Do you get that idea? So if you have all the cars parked in your main memory, then naturally one of these location might not be mapped, right? It's sitting empty. So if you attempt to go to page entry four, and if you see it is not mapped by this arrow, whatever you're calling it to the page frame, you, you suffer a page fault. So the OS realizes that, oh, that means I need to go to the disk, grab that data, then go to the main memory, remove one of the data which is no longer needed, push that new data onto the memory, find out its page entry, frame entry, and then map four now to point to that page number. So, so that now if you try to decode your virtual address, you will have a mapping from entry four to your targeted location, right? So this saves the programmer, the one who created that application. They don't have to now worry about fitting or not. Now it's the job of the OS to make it happen. That's why it's a software hardware uh, co-design, right? It's like, an, it's like a team of software and hardware where the OS level is now helping the limited hardware give that illusion where through the disk, it copies that data onto the main memory and then changes your page table entry so that now you have a page hit, right? The same concepts will occur in future lectures of cache miss and cache hit, right? It basically you found a record or you do not found a record. If you do not find a record, then map that record and then update your entry number. Right. So please uh, read this. It should be like straightforward here. So page faults are treated as exceptions in OS. And if you take advanced courses like 313 and OS and all those, so you would better, you'll be better able to appreciate all this layers of what is going behind the scenes. Okay. So I'm going to leave this question here so that if you want to solve, you can solve. I will be here for the next two, three minutes if you have any questions. So a quick reminder, your take home quiz on lecture 13 goes live tonight and you have only one attempt. Okay, so I highly suggest to read the lecture 13 notes, which is the notes before this one, and then attempt your lecture 13, right? Uh, the quiz. Samir, is there any question? Okay, let me stop recording. All right, so well, everyone, um, so this was uh, the last example for our lecture on Tuesday, which is lecture 14, right? So I wanted to uh, share my solution and the steps to solve such kind of questions. Now, one sample question is already given here in these class notes, but I wanted to take this opportunity to share my thought process so that you can solve it in a quicker way during an exam or a quiz. So the question talks about the translation from a virtual address to a physical address. So as you guys know, uh, virtual address corresponds to address on a virtual memory. And we want to find out how a page table will translate a virtual address to a physical address on main memory. So the requirements of this question given to us are, we have a virtual memory, which is a four GB size. We have, a, we have a physical memory, the actual hardware, which is of two GB and a page size, 
like each bit size is 4 KB. Okay, so uh, to draw in terms of perspective, okay, so I'm drawing at this stage, but when you are solving such question for your finals or quiz, you probably will not have that much time to draw and solve. So I highly encourage that while, uh, as long as you're practicing it, try to solve it as quickly as possible. And for initial questions you're solving, you can draw it out so that it makes sense for you in, during your preparation. So what we have got here is to put things in perspective, we have this virtual memory, which we call it as practically infinite. So this is four gigabytes, which corresponds to log of four gigabytes into base two, which is log of two raised to power 32 base two, which is 32 bits of virtual address. So you will have something from starting from zero all the way to two raised to power 32 minus one, right? So these are your addresses. But now so this is the address for each byte in a byte addressable memory scheme, right? But we know that the virtual memory is like, can be thought of as collection of pages, okay? So page size given to you is 4K, right? So what we can think of it as that the collection of four kilobytes is called a page. So suppose I call it as 4K, right? So this is called as page and we can calculate number of pages corresponding to this virtual memory, right? So number of pages is basically virtual memory size, which is four GB divided by page size, which is four K, which is one M or we can call it as two raised to power 20, right? So you have two raised to power 20 pages, collection of two raised to power 20 pages. Yeah, and the idea here is that a page from a virtual memory would be mapped to a main memory, right? And if we see this virtual memory address, this is 32 bits long from zero to 31, right? So try to think of it, try to think of this red bar as similar to this blue bar at the top. So from these 32 bits, I have to find out what is the page offset, right? And this page offset is in this example are the lower portion of this page uh, virtual memory address. So this page offset corresponds to a dedicated byte in your main memory. So this N corresponds to a dedicated row, one row or one entry in this physical memory. But then which frame is this byte located, right? This is the frame, frame K. How to know this K, right? So that job is done by these higher bits, which are called as page number. So page number would correspond to some P on the page table that location P on the page table would be storing the forwarding address called as the frame number, which will take you to this kth frame on physical memory. And once you go there, this page offset can narrow it down to that one byte in that frame, right? So inspired by that, we're going to do the similar design here. So our task here is to find out the virtual page number the virtual page number and page offset. So out of 32 bits, how many bits are reserved for page offset and how many bits are reserved for virtual page number, All right? Now the trick to do this is we can find the page offset. How? Because page offset corresponds to one byte in a 
page frame on main memory by definition. That's what page offset is. You can see the arrow at the top. So page offset narrows it down to one byte, right? So page frame. So how do we know the size of the page frame on the main memory? Well, as we have learned in today's lecture, page frame is just a terminology for page on virtual memory. So page frame on physical memory or main memory corresponds to a page on virtual memory, which means the size of frame, same as size of page, which is given to the question, given in the question as 4KB, right? So what is 4KB? Well, how many, so 4KB is the number of bytes which makes up a frame or a page. Right, so number of bits needed, right, is log 4k to the base 2, which is 12. k is 2 raised to the power 10, 4 is 2 raised to the power 2, 12. So 12 bits are needed to f locate a byte in a frame, right? So if this is your main memory, now to go into a frame, suppose this is a frame, to go inside this frame, this frame size is 4KB. And we know that each entry here is byte addressable. That means I have four kilo bytes, right? Or four kilo, uh, 4K registers, if you want to say where every register here is eight bits or a byte. Right. So to address each of this byte in this frame, I need 12 bits. So that becomes my page offset. Right. Because by definition, this page offset finds me the target byte in a frame. Right. So I need 12 bits. So I know that page offset corresponds to 12 bits now. So this is zero to 11. So we have at least decoded this part that from a 32 bits of virtual address, I need the lower 12 bits to find me the exact byte in a page frame. That means your number of bits, number of bits needed for virtual page number is 32 minus 12, which is 20. Right, so from 12 to 31. So you need 20 bits for a virtual page number, right? So virtual page number is represented by 20 bits, right? Now let's look into the virtual address given in the question. So now let's read the actual question. Virtual address be 0x FC5, so 0x FC5 1908F, 1908F, right? So this is the virtual address given to us. So this should correspond to now 32 bits as per our calculation from 4GB, right? Now, the question is find the corresponding physical address that this virtual address like 0xfc5 is or like this complete address is mapped to in the main memory. So we want to find out what is the physical address in the main memory mapping to, to this virtual address. And to do that, we need to first look into the page table, right? Because the page table is storing the mapping, the mapping address, right? On the main memory. So it says that the value or the frame number stored in the page table for the above virtual page entry P0X00152. 
So what this statement is basically saying is when you take the virtual page number from this sequence 0xfc51908f, now I don't know what part of this virtual address corresponds to virtual page number. What we know is if we take these 32 bits, right? So the lower 12 bits, zero to 11 is the page offset as per our calculation. And from 12 to 31 is my page number. So when I go to that page number P on this page table, the entry on that page table, which is giving me that forwarding address is basically 0x00152. That's what it said in this question. Okay, let the frame number stored in the page table for the other virtual page number P B 0 x 0 0 1 5 2. I hope this part is clear, right? So that means we will grab the higher 20 bits of the virtual page number, right? And replace it with this forwarding address or the frame number, right? But to replace that, we have to find out what, how many bits of address does our main memory need? Okay, from virtual memory, we know it's 32 bits, but we need to know how much memory, how, how many bits does my physical memory need as, as an address bits, right? So it's log 2G to the base two, G is two raised to power 30, so this is 31, right? So main memory address is 31 bits. That means it will go from zero till 30, right? So these things, should be very clear right now. That means from virtual address, I need to go to this address via a page table. And we have a 31 bit sequence here. This address corresponding to this red bar, which is a byte here, is 30, 31 bytes. That means zero to 30. Whereas virtual address is zero to 31, 32 bits, right? So that means what we do is let's try to represent this virtual address as a sequence of binary. And how do we do that in a hexadecimal representation? Every hexadecimal bit is represented as four binary bits, right? So F is 15, C is 12, five is five, one is one, nine is one double zero one, zero is zero, eight is one zero zero zero, F is, right? So this is just pure bin hexadecimal to binary, right? But if you look into our virtual address, it is 32 bits. Do we have 32 bits here? Or do we have to truncate somewhere? Let's look into this, right? 4, 8, 12, 16, 4 plus 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 20, 32. Voila. So we have a 32 bit sequence, right? 0 to 31, all right? And we learned that the lower 12 bits would be my page offset. So 0, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'm going to draw this partition. So lower twelve bits will give me my page offset. That means this is the address for that specific byte in a page frame. But to go to that page frame, I have to first find out the page table number. So this is my virtual page table number, right? Or virtual page number. Now, I don't have to decode it to find an entry on the page table, right? I don't have to decode it. Why? Because what's the point of converting it to a decimal number? Because the question itself says that if you go to that 
go to the page table for the above virtual page number, the entry stored there would be 0x00152. That means wherever I go here, suppose it takes me to this location on page table, this would give me 0x00152. And if I, so this is basically my frame number. So page table stores frame numbers. Right? Page table stores frame numbers, which you can think of it as forwarding addresses to the main memory. So now if we look into this main memory or the physical memory, so physical memory, main memory, it's the one on same thing. So we go to that frame number, which is 0x00152, and then go to that one specific location, which is given by this page offset, right? So now this diagram kind of simulates the diagram here, or probably the diagram here, right? So N is the page offset, P is the virtual page number, and K 0x00152 is a frame number as per our question, All right? So now to find out what is that physical address correspond to, corresponding to this sequence. So physical address would be 31 bits long, right? It would be 31 bits long as per our calculation here. Zero to 30, two GB is 31 bits. Right, so zero to 30. So the trick is, so the, so the rule is the page offset, the lower 12 bits is as it is because it identifies the location here. So it is as it is, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So if you convert it to hexadecimal, this is 0, 8, F. It's 0, 8, F. And the frame number now, replaces my virtual page number. So what is frame number 0x00152, right? So what is two? So I need to make, so out of 31 bits, 19 bits are for my frame number and then 12 bits are my for offset, right? This makes up 31 bits in my physical address. All right, let me just clarify here. This is my physical address. That's the solution I'm looking at, All right? So 0x00152, zero zero right? So two is 0010, zero zero zero, right? Five is 0101, zero right? I need 19 bits. I have now gone, I found out eight bits, right? One is 0001, zero zero one. four, eight, 12. I need seven more bits. Right, so two, five, one, I have zero, right? How many bits I have now from this? So this is my, if you're following this, this is basically my two, five and hexadecimal one, zero, and I've gone four, eight, 12, 16. I need three more bits. Well, I can borrow it from this is zero, right? So this is the zero, right? So the 31 bit sequence, so the 31 bit sequence is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten zeros, one, and the sequence, right? But if you convert it to uh, hexadecimal, it would just simply be what you're seeing here, zero, zero, one, five, two, zero, eight, F, zero, X. This is my answer. And my virtual address, which was given in my question, well, this is answered, which is physical address, right? And the virtual address given to me in the question was 0xfc5, 0xfc5, 19, 08F, right? So here you can see that the lower 12 bits, 4, 4, 4, 4, 12 remains the same. And the virtual page number 
had the location. This one, right? So let me just correct this shading a bit. So this is FC519, it's U0152, right? So while I took this a lot of time to explain you through the process, but make sure that you follow this process during your practice so that you fully understand what the meaning of mapping is and how do we find the page offset. So the rule that I kind of learned here is probably find the page offset first if no information is given on, given on the virtual page number. And then there's, if you subtract it from the number of virtual address bits, you get the virtual page number, right? So hopefully uh, this helps you to understand how to solve these questions. And there is a practice set on virtual memory. So please try those questions out and uh, we will have a take home quiz on Thursday. Thank you.